Welcome back to History of Mathematics. We are going to continue our work through the book Makers of Mathematics and move on to Chapter 4 about Archimedes and the later Hellenistic period. Now, Archimedes is generally considered the most important mathematician of antiquity, and several notable mathematical achievements include finding the formula for the surface area of a sphere, creating a procedure that would find the area of spiral shapes, finding volumes of various solids, and working with something called the method, in particular something sometimes called the method of exhaustion. And I would also note that Archimedes made several contributions to physics and engineering as well as mathematics. But the thing I want to discuss in this video is Archimedes' quadrature of the parabola. Now, quadrature is just a fancy name for finding the area. And he's not really talking about the area of a parabola, because, of course, we know a parabola is an infinite figure. So let's just imagine that drawing I have right there is a parabola. What he means is finding the area of a parabolic section. So something like this right here. So a parabolic section is the area bounded by a parabola on one side and a line on the other side. Now this is a very interesting use of Archimedes' method of exhaustion. So let me just pull up a figure here from the internet and show you how Archimedes would deal with this problem. Okay, so this is a figure I just kind of Pulled off Wikipedia. Oops, it's way over there now. Okay. So, um, so there's our figure. Okay, so what Archimedes would do to find the area of this parabolic section is he would say, okay, well, this is a figure that I don't know a formula for from elementary geometry, but I do know how to find the area of a triangle. So let me put a triangle in there. So that's what this blue triangle is. That's the first stage in Archimedes' quadrature of the parabola. Now, of course, this blue triangle is nowhere near the entire section. You have these areas that are left off. Okay, so what Archimedes does is he says, all right, well, this is just an estimate, and we can get a better estimate by adding these extra triangles these two new triangles. So the first stage is adding one triangle, and then the second stage is adding triangles on top of that. Of course, that's still not quite it. So the third stage, he adds these little yellow triangles here. And then the fourth stage would be adding the red triangles. Now, of course, at each stage, the total area of the triangles is just going to be an approximation of the area of the parabolic segment, but you will get a better approximation at each stage. So let's examine what's going on here. So let me just minimize that and go back to the camera. Okay, so I do want to talk about how many triangles we would have at each stage. Okay, so the first stage, there would be one triangle second stage there would be two triangles, the third stage there would be four. So each time we do this we're going to double the number of triangles that we're adding. So next stage after that, the fourth stage, you would have eight triangles. Now Archimedes, not only did he add in more triangles each time, he was careful to preserve a relationship between the areas of the triangles. So let me pull up another little figure from our Wikipedia article there. Okay, so that's the parabolic section that we discussed just a second ago. And this is a, 
a relationship between the area of the triangles in the first and second stages. So this blue one is the triangle from the first stage. There's the height of the triangle, and there's the base. And then uh, we've got this over here. Okay, so uh, we can probably get rid of that right now. So the original area would be one half the base times the height, one half height times width. And we saw that the next triangle was a quarter of the height and half the width. So we get this right here. Or in other words, the area of the second triangle is one eighth the area of the previous triangle. And Archimedes was choosing his triangles so that relationship held every time. So in general, the area of a triangle on the nth stage is going to be one eighth the area of the triangle that you had on the previous stage. So if you trace that back, you can go all the way back to the original triangle. So you can write the area of any of the triangles in terms of the area of the first triangle. You just need to add the correct number of factors of one eighth. So let's look at what the total area would be. Okay, so we have that area of the first triangle plus, now we know on the second stage that two triangles were added to the picture, and those triangles were one eighth the area that we had right here. Now, start with one triangle, next stage we add two triangles, then we would add four triangles. And the triangles we're adding on the third stage would be one eighth of the area of the triangles that were added on the second stage. So we have one over eight squared. And then over here, we would have eight triangles, one over eight cubed. And then we keep on going ad infinitum. So uh, let me see here. What we can do is, so this is the total area. Uh, I notice every term is divisible by a t. Got a factor of t there, so let's factor that out. Okay, now this can be simplified. That's one quarter. Okay, now let's think a little bit here. You got four divided by eight squared. Eight squared is 64. Four divided by 64 is one sixteenth. But I think it might be a little more helpful if I wrote it this way. That's one quarter squared. Now here, eight and eight cubed. That would cancel, that would leave me 64. But of course, we know that 4 cubed actually is 64. Okay, so I think that's probably enough for us to get this pattern here. So we've got the area of the first triangle, and then we have this sum to deal with. Now, of course, this sum can be continued indefinitely, but we'll notice it's a very special kind of sum. This is what is called a geometric series. Okay, a geometric series is one of the few sums where we can actually find the value that it converges to. And I'm sure you remember from your calculus. Uh, that if I looked at this sum, 1 plus r plus r squared plus r cubed plus dot dot dot, plus keep on going forever, but that would be equal to 1 over 1 minus r, where r is the common ratio. Now, 
there is a restriction on this. You can't use any old value of r for this formula to work out. You have to use values of r that are between minus 1 and 1. In our case, r equals 1 quarter. Okay? The common ratio is what you're multiplying by to get from one term to another. So this area that we decided was the area of the original triangle plus this sum well since our common ratio is one fourth we'd have one over one minus one fourth okay let's work on simplifying this complex fraction here I got a fraction with a fraction inside it. I'm going to hit everything with a 4. So hit the top with a 4, it becomes a 4. This becomes a 4. You hit 1 fourth with a 4, it becomes a 1. Okay, so I multiplied by the same thing, top and bottom. So a very quick way to simplify a complex fraction. So the area of the parabolic section is four-thirds times the area of the original triangle that we started this process with. Okay, so Archimedes was able to relate the area of that figure to the area of a triangle using this idea of a geometric series. So, you can see here that Archimedes was actually pretty close to coming up with integral calculus right here. Uh, we can't quite credit him with creating integral calculus because he didn't quite generalize this process enough, but you got the basics. Okay, what you do is you're looking for an area, and it's an area that you cannot compute directly. So you come up with an approximation, and then you have a procedure for refining that approximation and getting a better approximation and then you do what is essentially a limiting process. So a uh, very important result here from Archimedes about finding the area of a parabola through what people might call the method of exhaustion.